While my dears, we're going for a beautiful sunny stroll through the old part of Zurich today. I do hope you can join me. Oh, look at that horrible graffiti. They should be publicly flogged. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? We're going to have a nice tour, ending with our favorite junk store explorations. Look at this artwork. I do like that. The lady ended up eyeballing me. She probably thought I was casing the joint. <laughs> Very nice, quite unique. Here we have a gaggle of tourists from the northern countries coming to inspect Switzerland. It's a gorgeous day, it really was. I decided to head out here and spend half a day. Lots of people were thinking the same. You know, there's lots of tiny little alleyways uh, which connect right through the old part. In the old days, you would have got lost as a tourist, but now with Google Maps, you can easily find your way back. So you can quite happily just wander to your heart's content. There's always something to look at. You see, they just sort of go down and up and through. I love it. Not very appealing in winter, but it's not winter, it's summer. So let us enjoy. Now we're heading down to the to the water, the river that runs right through. Excuse me, sir, madam. They were embracing each other, long lost lovers. So we're going down to the water there. That's the Limat, and we are going to go across the bridge to the other old part across there. Can you see it with the gorgeous old buildings? That is where we are going. Wow. Doesn't that look nice? You can take boat tours along this river. Beautiful old buildings, aren't they? Gorgeous. Goodbye to the gaggle of northern country tourists. They sounded like a sort of herd of buffaloes coming through. They were so loud. This is a bookshop with beer. I mean, yeah, I like it. I like the idea of that, drinking beer while you're perusing books. Why not? Gallery rights. More little lanes. Heading, you could spend the whole day really, and you still wouldn't see everything. And a nice little square here with lots of space. Tourists getting their photos taken. All roads lead to Zurich. Students under a tree discussing philosophy and what club they're going to tonight. And it wouldn't be Switzerland without a cuckoo clock shop. Aren't they beautiful? Imagine all those in your house it would drive you nuts. Here we have an antique shop and as usual it's closed. I have, I'm having that luck lately with these antique shops but don't worry we do find some that are open. A lot of this stuff back in my time would have just been classed as bric-a-brac, but now it's been elevated to antique status. Yes, and antique status prices. To be fair, there are quite a few old things in here as well, officially antiques. This place roasts their own blend of coffee. It smells gorgeous. I wish you could smell it. I wish it was a scratch and sniff video. Beautiful aromas. So we're over the other side now. Uh, oh, that's a health food shop. Let's quickly move along. Ah, Gaia milk chocolate. Look at this gorgeous antique glass sign and some rockin' low life has cracked it. Oh my goodness. 
No, it nearly makes you cry. American vintage. Look. It doesn't look very vintage, does it? The clothing. Hmm. Yeah, you'd have a you'd have a, if it's a nice day you'd really enjoy it. You could just spend the whole day. See this place here is it's been around for a long time. It sells condoms and other sex aids. It really is sort of a, what do you call it? Legendary. A tiny little shop. When I first came to Switzerland twenty five years ago now, that shop was there still. I love these little sort of narrow streets where the cars can't come through. That is really, apart from a few delivery vans once in a while, but that's the beauty of it. I really hate being stressed by diesel vans. The Rheinfeld beer house, that used to be rough. I went in there when I first came with a mate, and my goodness. Wow, even the publican was rough. I think it's gone a bit upmarket now. Look at this little car, it's a Decave, which later became Audi. Can you see the sign on the back there? It's a gorgeous, tiny little engine, three-cylinder, uh, yep, three-cylinder, 50 PS. Isn't that sweet? And a shop after my own heart. So, we continue our journey. Where does it lead? Apple chamber, that means, that's in Swiss German, Ipfelkammer. So it's a little restaurant and he stuck wine bottles. Wow, in northern England where I used to live, we would have picked them off with air rifles. <laughs> no, I wasn't a vandal. Absolutely not. I detest them. So, what have we got here? Another little square and people eating. Look, the Swiss cookie, that means kitchen, Swiss kitchen. That was doing a roaring trade. There's a lot of people there. There's a cow on a balcony, and why not? Why not? Look at this Thai vintage cafe. And the sign looks to be from the 1950s. I would love to know the history of this place. I looked it up and I couldn't find anything. Isn't that sweet? Didn't look like there was much life happening. And this is the Isabarnley restaurant, which just means like a train restaurant. Good enough name, why not? Now this place here was an old chemist shop. And the reason why I'm taking you in here is to see the architecture. It's basically layers of history. It's been untouched. Uh, the person has just taken over. It hasn't had any renovations to it. The original signage is there. Um, so I, really, I just want to show you inside how it looks. Unbeknownst to me, the guy inside, the, the, the owner or the renter of the shop, who looked a bit older than me, uh, he was trying to chat up a very young, attractive overseas student in his bad English. And my presence was not wanted. I could feel a hostile chill coming from him. I tried to get a sense whether the girl needed rescuing, but... No, she, they were talking about wood, uh, but it's obvious what his intentions were. And, you know, the fact that he did not want me around. So I ignored him and I still filmed uh, the inside. I thought, well, you can try and chuck me out if you wish. I just want to show you this shop because really you don't find any shops like this in Zurich where the history is still layered in the walls. So check this out. So here we can see the shop window. Look at the old radiator for the window, the original radiator. All these shops have been refurbished, all these old shops. This is unique. You can see all the original ceiling plaster with the decorations. It's totally unrestored. And on the wall, you can see the original wallpaper or what's left of it. Look, the whole chunks of plaster coming down. Isn't that amazing? And I found this old, beautiful Peugeot camper van, which is from the 1960s, I believe. Isn't that sweet? Absolutely, either in original perfect condition or, or restored, I suspect. 
the latter because I, these were known as rust buckets. So, isn't that sweet? See, if you're driving one of those, people don't drive right up behind you and harass you. It has that sort of vintage car respect. And look at all these beautiful herb containers. Aren't they sweet? All in French. We are now officially junking, my dears. Salt. Aren't they nice? With the Dutch motif. There's another one for, let's look at a spice rack. Yes. Isn't it, look at the little handles, the little porcelain handles. Uh, isn't, isn't that sweet? An old telephone, pricey. I've sold one much better than that, much cheaper. For 180, they want 385 for that. Woo! My goodness. So how are antiques doing in your part of the world? That's a nice old typewriter. I don't recognize this name. What is that? Pa Payard? 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 Never heard of it. How's the antiques business doing in your part of the world? Is it booming or is it falling away? Now look at this pimp so far from the 70s. Wow. Oh my goodness, that's so cool, isn't it? It's in pretty good nick as well. Yes, the Love Lounge. That doesn't look as comfortable as the Love Lounge, I must admit. <laughs> oh dear, that's for the, where the, the Calvinists sit, so they can't get any sensual pleasures from that seat. It's just torture all the way. Imagine sitting in the evening watching, watching TV with that. Oh my goodness. Sort of a 1940s, late 30s. With matching candlesticks, I guess. I think they're candle holders. Hmm. It's quite nice. It's got brass feet or brass plated feet. 340. Franks is quite a lot though. Here we have bits and pieces, dead animals, skulls with horns, bric-a-brac, stuff from house removals that have been left behind from deceased generations, some form of stapler, weights, cowbells, dead birds, you name it. There's a little steam engine. And look at that old Swiss plane. That has that really has some age. That's like 1940s. Gollywog? They're not allowed anymore, are they? Um, another steam train. Looks like an old Mustang at the back. Hard to tell. There's a lot of repros of those going around. Whether that's really... That could be a repro too. Some of them are... That looks pretty old though. The one to the right. It's getting hard to tell. The repros are pretty clever now and there's a little oven model of an oven for a child 140 swiss francs whoa man 20 years ago you could get much better ones than that cheaper i don't know the antiques might not be doing well but the prices are going up there's a nice little train that's quite sweet isn't it yeah i've got one similar i do have one similar if I remember, I will show you at the end. I've got all sorts of stuff. Eclectic. Ah, oh, look, it's Prince Charming and Cinderella. There's another one. Is that, no, there's another stove for 180. They want that. They want for that one. Fire engine, that's nice. That looks definitely vintage. And look, that's an American car from the 50s, isn't it? Barnum's Animals. There's another American car, I believe. And what's this? Is this for rolling handmade paper to flatten it out? Your guess is as good as mine. I welcome any suggestions as to what this might be. And look at this clock. This took my fancy. Look at that with a swan behind glass. The glass is unfortunately cracked. 
it could be replaced. I'm not sure how hard it is to get that gold frame away. But isn't that nice? 380. I'd rather have uh, that than two of those model stoves. And here we have a bell. This would have uh, alerted the farmhands and the family that lunch was ready or dinner was ready. Lots of little things. Knickknacks. Knickknacks, my dear. That's a painting by a well-known German artist, romantic artist, whose name escapes me at the moment. If I remember, I'll put it up on the screen. Print with old glass. You can see the glass, how it's wavy. Very nice. I like that. 1920s telephone, Art Deco. And what is that? Is it the Harlequin? Le Indifferent. Le Indifferent. Okay. Hmm. And a creepy doll with a Scottish, Scottish costume on. Have a look at this beauty, my dears. This is the second class dining room of the Titanic. And isn't that a wonderful frame as well? I love the green inlay around the gold decoration or inside of the gold decoration. This must have been the gallery, I suspect, this uh, label here, who had it on display. Not really sure what that is about, but a very nice. This is part of my collection. And next is this little Walther pistol, which in a little over one year will be officially an antique. Isn't that sweet? It's a 25 caliber pocket pistol. This one has a little wallet to go with it. These were very popular in the 1920s, not just Walther, but there was a lot of little pocket pistols on the market. They didn't really have much stopping power, but of course, if you hit them in a vital place, it would still do the job. The little bag of crystals I put there to, to stop damp getting in corrosion. Quite a sweet little piece. I've had that for like, well, 20 years. I wanted to give you a bit of an idea how big the gun is, or should I say how small the gun is. This is not a Walther, this is just a, an image from the internet I found of a similar vest slash pocket pistol. Uh, and the Walther's are a little bit smaller than that, so it's not exactly intimidating. They do, they look like a child's uh, gun, don't they, you know, but uh, I can assure you it's not. And look at this beautiful antique print. This is a Covent Garden Lady of the Night, 18th century, or early 19th century. The title is What You Will, and she has her finger coquettishly in her mouth, suggesting you may do anything you like, if the price is right. Do you have any gold sovereigns on you, sir? I think the colors may have faded a little bit, it would have been beautiful pinks, shades of pink in that originally, uh, in a gorgeous old frame, has a new matting. Isn't that a lovely old print? I'm sure this was aimed at the gentleman market, of course. I love her costume. And so, my dears, we are coming to the end of this episode, but stay tuned for the next, because... In our next trip, we're off to South Tyrol. Tyrol, Tyrol. However you wish to pronounce it, it's going to be fun. The first day was raining, but it got better. And we visit this amazing old museum, which has an even more amazing history with some very interesting items inside. Wait till you see that. And I do hope you'll enjoy the rest of the trip. Love to hear from you in the comments section. Hope you've enjoyed the tour. Thank you, my friends. By the way, for those of you on my Patreon and haven't received a notification yet, the newest presentation is already posted. And for those of you on YouTube who are not yet a Patreon member, this story might be right up your alley. Check out the trailer and see if it's something you'd like to watch. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.
It's 1877. The days are getting colder and winter is approaching. It's too cold to go down to the Seine and watch the passing boats. What else can one do to keep the kids from being bored on the weekend? I know. How about a trip down to the Paris morgue? Great family entertainment and it's free of charge. Don your Sunday best and take a stroll. It's perfectly situated on the banks of the Seine. This was because of all the bodies that ended up in that famous Parisian river. From accidents and suicides to victims of murders, they were scooped up and taken to the Paris morgue. Hundreds of thousands of people would visit to gawk at the bodies. Fights broke out for a better viewing position. It became so popular that in 1888, they fitted electric lighting. New bodies would be put on display every three days to keep the public entertained. In this video, we follow the footsteps of the Parisians who delighted in viewing the decomposed and mutilated bodies of their fellow citizens. The owners of the city's theatres complained that they could never get such an audience. 